Hi. Okay, 1991 in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I had just quit my job. I got another job right away. Um, by the way, I was not getting child support like I was supposed to. Um, Bob was sending me a couple hundred here and there when he felt like it, but not um, what he was supposed to do according to our agreement. And I got a job at a place called Network Rental, and it was like um, Aaron Rents was our competition, which is still around. Network Rental has closed down years ago. Uh, Network Rental had 13 stores, and they were one of those places that would um, rent furniture uh, to you if you couldn't afford to buy furniture and appliances. And I there was some kind of a plan. I think you could, um, it was like a rent to own thing, I think. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, I was hired for accounts payable for all 13 stores. This was excellent uh, experience for me. Uh, this was the biggest company I have worked for to date. And I mean, to that date, <laughs> right? And um, so I was in charge of all the accounts payable. Uh, there was a guy who worked with me in the office. Um, his name was Christopher and he, his desk was right in front of me and we became really good friends. He was awesome. And um, a few other people, you know, it was a small office, but there was other people there. And um, when I first got hired, uh, my boss, who was the controller, he told me that the reason he hired me, he said that there was over 300 um, applicants for the position. And he said they were all qualified. He said the reason he hired me was because I was a single mother with three kids. And he was a Christian man, and uh, that was just really sweet and good, and um, I believe God told him to hire me because <laughs> I really needed that job. Now, the downside of the job was that there was, um, I had to work 45 hours a week was required, and the five hours over 40, instead of getting overtime, they called it Chinese overtime. And uh, it was legal in the state of Georgia. I looked that up. And what they actually did after 40 hours, I, I got a good salary. I mean, I, I think I was making $20 an hour, hired at $20 an hour, which was pretty good. And I, this was 1991. And um, the Chinese overtime thing was if you worked over 40 hours, you got half pay for those extra five hours. Instead of time and a half, you got only half pay. But in order to get the job, I had to sign off on that, that that was okay. I agreed to that. So I did. And, um, first day at work, you know, I, I had, I knew how to do Lotus one, two, three. Um, as far as spreadsheets go, that's what I knew. That's what I had worked on. That's what I went to school for. And they had Excel. And I had never done Excel. I thought it was, it had to be really almost the same, right? Because it was spreadsheets. Well, I got on there and I looked at that thing and I didn't know what to do. And I just started messing around, trying to figure it out. And he came over, my boss the controller, he came over, looked over my shoulder. He said, you've never worked on Excel before, have you? <laughs> I said, no. He was so nice. He said, Christopher, come and show her what to do here, how to do this. And he did, and that was all good. They were good to me. They were really good to me. There was a lady there um, uh, who worked. She was the assistant to the boss, and... Uh, got a little bit friendly with her. I felt a little uncomfortable about it because I could tell um, the way she was. You know, she was a wild woman. <laughs> and um, I, she was real friendly to me. She wanted to hang out with me. So one time I agreed to go out with her one evening, um, early evening. I wouldn't stay out because of my kids and all. I would maybe go out for, you know, just around dinner time, you know, have something to eat and get back to my kids. 
But uh, so that's what I did. She wanted to go to the sports bar uh, because that's where the men hung out, right? Well, this lady, she was wild woman, and she uh, she told me she was actually uh, having an affair with one of the main DJs on the radio in Atlanta at that time. And he was married. And she was having an affair with him. She would come in and tell me every night about him and everything. I mean, every day about the night before and da da da. And um, she was a bad girl. She, you know, I was I was 39 at this time, and she was um, uh, like 25 or something. And she had already been married several times and divorced. She was a wild woman. And she didn't care that this guy was married or anything. She was having fun, and she was, you know, messing around with another guy that she told me about at the same time with this DJ, another guy, anyway. Um, I didn't feel good about it, but one day I did agree to go with her because she was always asking me. And we went to the sports bar, but when I went to go get her at her house, at her apartment, she was wearing this... Um, Thing. It was really embarrassing to be with her because she had this thing on. She looked like a hooker. She had really big boobs and she had on this thing that was this top that went all, it was like sheer all the way down to her waist. You know, I mean, it, it was, it was like, yeah, she looked like a hooker. And I don't, you know, I was, I always dressed conservative. I didn't have any sexy clothes. So anyway, um, we went, we had, you know, something to eat, and she says, I got to get up and strut my stuff, and she went strutting her stuff around the bar, and I just sat there and ate, <laughs> and anyway, I never went out with her again, but she was a trip, and um, so that was, it was a good job, I was there for two years, and um, I, anyway, my story now, I was working there, okay? So, let me tell you more about where I lived at Signature Ridge, okay? There was one lady there. Well, first, let me tell you about this one guy, okay? So, well, there's several stories I want to tell you, okay? Uh, I put my daughter in the master bedroom. It was only a two-bedroom apartment because that's all I could afford. I put my daughter in the master bedroom. My boys had bunk beds in the in the one bedroom, the other bedroom. And there was only one bathroom. I think, I, no, there might have been two. There might have been one off the master. Anyway, I slept in the dining room. I slept on a day bed in the dining room. Um, and there was a sliding door uh, off the dining area there, but... The outside of that door, there was just about a foot of dirt and then a big, steep drop. So nobody could really go out there or do anything out there. And um, it was just a sliding glass door. I didn't have any kind of curtain or shades or anything on there. But like I say, I didn't think anybody could go back there. Uh, they would fall off the cliff, you know. Um, one day, I was... The kids were in their bedrooms. It was late, getting late, and um, I was in the bed. But I wasn't asleep like, like I had just gone to bed, right? It was maybe 10 o'clock or something. And I saw this guy was looking at me through the um, sliding doors, through the patio doors. There was no patio. Anyway, the sliding doors. Um... I was facing him, and I noticed him. He was squatted down, low to the ground, staring at me. And I just pretended like I didn't see him. And I, I had, I had on a big T-shirt and my underwear. That was it. That was what I was sleeping in that night. And I just, I, I got up and I got my robe and I went out the front door. I, I didn't show any sign that I saw him. I just went out the front door. I went next door. Now, I had never met my next door neighbors yet. And it was a, a couple. And um, I knocked on their door. It was pretty late, but I, they were in the living room watching TV. And I said, you know, sorry to bother you, but uh, there's somebody, I live next door, and there's somebody staring 
at me through the window right now. And the guy grabbed a, um, he went in the closet, got a baseball bat, went out back, and the guy was gone. So nothing happened, but um, a story to tell. Um, I told the office the next day, and they said, you should have called the police. Well, the quickest thing I could have done was go to my next door neighbor, even though I had never met the guy, but, you know, he did the right thing and got the baseball bat and went out there to chase that guy away. He was already gone, so good thing. Okay, um, my other, I met another lady um, who lived there in those apartments, and she was uh, Middle Eastern. I don't remember um, what country she was from. But she was uh, Middle Eastern and a uh, little younger than me. She had a little boy four years old. This little boy was a brat. I met her at the pool, and that's where I would see her all the time. And he was a brat. I mean, he did not pay any attention to his mother when she called him. You know, if she said no, he would do it. You know, he would talk mean to her. and He just had no regard for his mother at all. Uh, just a wild, bad kid, um, running around and um, being mean to other kids and, you know, splashing people in the pool and pushing other kids and just being a brat, basically, or, you know, running around being a brat around the pool. And uh, I got friendly with the, the mother and, you know, um, I was witnessing to her telling her about my faith, and um, that's what I do a lot, because uh, that's who I am, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, this lady let me know that she was struggling with her kid as a single parent, she was really struggling, she didn't know what to do with him, he was totally out of control, he's only four years old, and um, then one day, she called me, and she said that she went to a church and she talked to them about her son, that she was just beside herself. She didn't know what to do with him. And the pastor was going to come over. She said she thought she felt like um, the boy was demon possessed. And she talked to the pastor and he said he was going to come over at a certain time and do like what she called like an exorcism, right? Um, she asked me to come and participate and be there and all that. So I said, sure, okay, I'll be there. So um, I prayed a lot. I was prepared. I told you in previous episodes, I had some experience in this um, spiritual warfare arena. Um, I had been to a whole weekend seminar about this kind of thing. I felt confident. I prayed up and brought my Bible. I went over there when it was time. I was ready to face whatever was coming. And I got there first, and I went and sat, you know, she welcomed me in, sat down. Then the pastor came with his wife and another couple. And they came in, and... You know, she introduced them to me, and somehow I got the feeling they didn't like me being there. They did not, they were not real receptive to me being there. I got the feeling that they really didn't want me there. They didn't know I was going to be there. They didn't like that I was going to be there. This was their game, right? Well, the lady who was my friend went in the other room with her kid for a few minutes you know, and then she came out and she had this weird demeanor about her. And she came out and she told me in a really mean way, she got into my face and said, you need to leave. She pointed like right at my face and she said, you need to leave. You need to get out right now, get out, get out, get out. She started screaming at me. Whoa. Well, yeah, I left, but I could see what was going on there. There was real serious demonic activity going on there. And 
the demons know the Holy Spirit, and I had the Holy Spirit, and they did not want me there. And that that lady conveyed that to me because they conveyed it to her somehow. That's what I believe. Anyway, yeah, I left, sure. But, I, you know, I just went home and prayed. And uh, she was never friendly to me after that. I don't know what happened. But that's one story. Now, also, when I was living there, then one day I was coming home from the um, groceries and I, I had a lot of groceries. I had three kids, you know, I got a lot of groceries and um, I had just pulled up and there was this um, black guy walking um, by, uh, big tall guy. Um, he said hi and I said hi, you know, I was trying to be friendly to all my neighbors and, you know, making new friends. I'm new and uh, just trying to be friendly and nice and, um, you know, so he said, can I help you with your groceries? And I thought, why not? You know, so I said, sure. Okay, thank you. And he helped me bring in my groceries and we chit chatted and he was very nice. Uh, he had an accent. So I asked him where he was from. He was from Africa. I don't remember what country, but his name was Muhammad. He was Muslim and he was from Africa. And um, very nice, very polite. And uh, so after that, I would see him occasionally, uh, same way, just walking by my apartment. And he told me that he did not live there, but he had a friend that lived there. So he would come, he would be there often to visit his friend. And he didn't have a car. He lived a ways down the road, another apartment complex. And he would walk and come visit his friend every once in a while. And we got friendly. And, you know, just... We would just chit chat outside a little bit, but I did witness to him like I did to most people that I got friendly with, you know, and um, especially because he was a Muslim too, and I let him know that I was a Christian, and um, you know, we had a little bit of talk about that subject and all, and he was very interested, you know, he liked to hear about my Christianity, so I told him more and more, and he liked it. And we had a lot of good little conversations. Um, and then one day I was home at night with the kids, you know, and it was dark out. I think it wasn't real late. It was like maybe eight o'clock or something. And um, knock on the door and uh, it was him. I opened the door. He had three of his friends with him that I had never met before. And that made me kind of uncomfortable. And also, he had never come to my house at night like that before. And um, anyway, he says, uh, I have my friends here, and we want Bible study. Uh, they're all, they all want Bible study. And he introduces me to his friends. So how could I turn them away, right? I didn't feel comfortable about it. I didn't like that he would pop in like that, uninvited. Um, but I let him in and we sat in the living room. We had a little Bible study and then I drove them home to the other apartments down the road. And, um, after that, the next time I saw him, I said, or maybe that time, maybe when the, maybe I don't remember if it was in the car, maybe his friends got out first or whenever it was, I don't know. But I told him, I said, don't ever ever come to my house like that again don't you ever come over at night period and don't ever come over with friends unless you tell me ahead of time and I can be expecting you and um, he respected that and it never happened again okay just another story now let's see what else do I have on the agenda um, I still have a few more minutes okay so my kids went to school right and um Lauren um, went to the Sandy Springs Middle School, and she actually had Usher. You remember Usher? Um, no, I don't keep up with that um, hip-hop, whatever. Uh, I don't know, but he was big. He, he was a big name, you know, singer. And uh, she w he was in her class anyway, pretty cool, in her eighth grade class. Um, uh, let's see. So 
I told you I was still seeing the guy, um, Tim, on and off a little bit, but it wasn't looking too good, you know, I mean, it wasn't really, our relationship was not really progressing like I had hoped, but I wasn't counting on it, because from the beginning, he said, told me, he said, I'm not promising you anything. He said, I will, we'll see each other and we'll just see how it goes. Cause you know, it's been 20 years, you know, we've both changed and you know, so, and he was still with this other woman. Well, he told me that the other woman, um, he was actually engaged to her for like seven, eight years by now. And so I thought there was something wrong and I thought God put us together maybe, <laughs> but, um, I thought it wasn't too late because they weren't married yet. So in my mind, you know, I wasn't used to dating. I hadn't, I was with the same man for 19 years and we just broke up. So I was not into the dating scene. I really didn't know how to do it. And I didn't know how to set my boundaries and all that. Um, but uh, we, we were seeing each other like maybe, I don't know how often, maybe once a week, uh, maybe not even, I don't know. But uh, I did start dating another guy that I met in the laundromat at the apartments. And he was a really good looking. Oh, my goodness. He was so good looking. And I was just so flattered that he would even, you know, want to date me. And um, met him in the laundromat. And he um, offered to help fold my clothes. And he helped fold my clothes. So he saw right away that I had kids. And... Um, he met my kids and we would go out um, bowling a lot and uh, I don't even remember. I just remember bowling a lot, but we did go out and we probably went out to eat and movies, I suppose. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But, you know, sometimes he would come over, he met my kids and um, that was all okay. He didn't try to get close to them, but, you know, he was friendly with them and, um, I would go over to his apartment sometimes, but now he had a job, he had a good job, and he was young, he was only 27, and I was 39, so I didn't expect that to go anywhere, but I was so flattered that he liked me and wanted to spend time with me, and I really liked him, he was, he was a good, sweet, nice person, and um, so handsome. And, you know, I was just kind of enjoying it, but I didn't expect it to go anywhere because of the age difference. So I didn't take him seriously, but he had a good job, but he had to travel all the time. So um, he was only home every other week. I would see him like twice a month, right? Because he was only there every other weekend. And on the opposite weekends, he would go visit his parents who were in another state. So that was the extent of our relationship, like saw him like twice a month, um, but it was good, it was sweet, it was good, I really liked him a lot, I'll tell you one funny thing, I was a good bowler, I told you I started bowling um, with our 8th grade class when I was um, 13, and I, I had an average um, in the high 180s, my average was like 186 or something like that, and I was at the point where I was just trying to break 200, and um, we used to go bowling, and he couldn't beat me. And he got so frustrated because he couldn't beat me. And um, one time, this is the only thing I didn't like about him, was this one time when he was just so determined that he wanted to beat me that he just kept playing. Now, I couldn't play more than three usually. I didn't like to play more than three games in a row. I might, if I did four, it wasn't good. So usually I would stop after three games and he played eight games straight and I just sat and watched while he was trying to beat my score. He never could beat my score. And um, Anyway, that was the only thing about him that I didn't like because he was a sweetheart. Uh, anyway, let's see. Time's up, so we will continue next time more about all that. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope you come back, and um, lots more.